Hello friends, welcome to Global Online University. Friends, in this video, we are going to discuss some important MCQs on growth and development for your upcoming UGC NET and other state set in economics. Friends, if you are preparing for UGC NET in economics or other state set in economics, then this crash course is very helpful for you. In this crash course, we are going to provide you 20 mock tests for paper to economics. After attending the test, we will receive the uh, solution PDF of all the 20 tests and you will also receive notes on all the units. We are, we are providing 2000 plus MCQs PDF which will cover all previous year questions only at Rs 999. I think it is very minimum amount for this crash course if you want to join this crash course uh, you can pay on this number via using google pay or phone pay then you can send me the screenshot i am going to add you to the whatsapp group then you will receive the material you can receive the material in your via whatsapp or uh, through your mail id so yeah, i believe if you join this crash course you can score more in paper too Yes, and if you want to join this crash course you can contact this number the number is displayed on your screen or else you can download our global online university app from play store here we will provide mock tests notes video lectures and all yes and uh, i believe you know the revised dates of examination ugc uh, nta ugc net examination dates are revised uh, examination dates are 6 october to 8 october and uh, 17 October to 19 October 2021. Please remember the revised dates. Uh, so let us move to the questions here. Here the first question is in Solo's model of growth, the output per capita is a function of yes. In Solo's model, uh, the output per capita it is a function of option A labor capital ratio, option B rate of ex exchange of capital ratio, uh, capital and labor ratio, option C capital output ratio option d technical progress yes here the right answer is option a labor capital ratio please remember in solo's model of growth the output per capital it is a function of labor to capital ratio let us see about solo's model in a solo's model according to according to solo economic growth can come from capital deepening please remember it in solo's model the eka economic growth can come from capital deepening or the improvement in the factor productivity yes please remember it uh, the economic growth can take place uh, due to capital deepening or factor productivity it implies that growth can come about saving and investment or from improvement in the productive efficiency and the here the production function in which output depends upon capital and labor yes please remember in solo's model output depends on capital and capital labor ratio and also technological efficiency yes here the form parameter is also given yt is equal to af into kt lt k stands for capital l stands for labor t stands for technological development yes so in solo's model it is assumed that capital and labor rises the output yes so here the right answer is option a labor and capital ratio so in solo's model output per capital it is depend on the labor and capital ratio let us move to the next question. Here the next question is Levy's theory explains the process of development considering dash sector economy. One sector economy, two, four or none of these. Yes, I hope you know about the Levy's theory. Uh, it is very basic question. Levy's theory of development, it is based on the two sector economy. One is capitalist sector, another one is subsistence sector. So let us study about the uh, Lewis model. Here yes, Lewis model it is known as the dual sector model. Yes, it is commonly known uh, dual sector model. It is commonly known as the Lewis model. And uh, the inventor of this theory is W. A. Lewis, Arthur Lewis. And uh, it explains the growth of developing economy in terms of labor transition. Yes, here the laborers will move from uh, move between two sectors one is capitalist sector another one is subsistence sector so uh, there will be two sectors in the living levies model uh, one is capitalist sector another one is subsistence sector the next question is 
in the levis model of economic development the capitalist sector generates and reinvests surplus and in turn absorbs labor withdrawn from the subsistence sector this process continues till as yes, i hope you know about the levis model in levis economic development model what will happen the capital list they will save and also whatever they are saying they are again going to invest it and and here the capitalists are working for capital surplus surplus the for profit they are working to earn more and more profit whatever they are saving again they are going to invest it this this process will continue till option a marginal product of labor in the capitalist sector is greater than zero option b marginal productivity of labor in the capitalist sector is less than marginal product of labor in the subsistence sector option c marginal productivity of labor in the capital sector is greater than wage rate in that sector and marginal productivity of labor in the subsistence sector is now positive option d marginal product of labor is equal to average product of labor in capital sector let us see first explanation here here uh, according to this model according to levis model capitalist they are aiming at profit maximization yes the capitalist they want to earn more and more profit to earn more profit what they are going to do first they are going to save and after whatever they are saving they are going to invest it another activity and since the marginal productivity of labor in the capital se capitalist sector is higher than the capitalist wage this results in the capitalist surplus or it is known as the capitalist profit yes on um, okay so here the capitalists are working for this capital is surplus yes if the marginal productivity of labor is in the capitalist sector is higher than the capitalist wage yes automatically capital surplus will take place and this surplus is again reinvested yes whatever they are saving or the whatever capital surplus is there again they are going to re reinvest in the another business or in another capital assets and capital again capital formation will take place and more people will be employed from subsistence sector and this process is going to continue till the capital labor ratio rises and the supply of labor becomes elastic and the surplus labor will disappear yes this process is going to continue till the labor surplus labor disappears in the subsistence sector so here in levis model economic development uh, the capitalist sector generates and reinvests surplus and in turn absorbs labor withdrawn from the subsistence sector the process continues till marginal productivity of labor in the capitalist sector is greater than the wage rate in the in that sector and marginal productivity of labor in the subsistence sector is now positive so option c is the correct answer Uh, the next question is a number of indivisibilities hinder the process of economic growth in the initial stages this view was initiated by uh, option a ragnar narkse option b h w singer option c rosenstein rodan option d w w rosto a number of indivisibilities yes hinder the process of economic growth yes this will come under the big push theory yes this is given by w w sorry yeah. rosenstein rodan please remember it yes the originator of the uh, big push theory is uh, paul rosenstein rodan in the year of 1943 yes uh, many times a question has been arisen on this topic and also please remember in the uh, okay in uh, this is uh, again the further contributions are made by murphy shepper and vishni in the year of 1989 please remember these three names Uh, i think question may arise on this on these uh, economists now in the next uh, upcoming examination the contributions made by uh, made uh, by murphy shelper robert uh, w vishni in the year of 1989 to the big push theory and the theory of the model it, it is uh, okay this theory big push theory is going to emphasize underdeveloped countries require huge investment large investment uh, to move from backwardness to the developed countries so for the for under development countries uh, for development we have to invest in a large amount yes what the rosenstein rodan says here 
sorry uh, yes, Rosen, rosenstein rodan says that bit by bit investment means small investment program will not impact the process of growth yes into the uh, for the process of growth for underdevelopment countries to move from backwardness to the developed countries we should invest in a large amount yes a small amount of investment will not help for the development and again he says that uh, in fact injections of small quantities of investment will merely lead to a wastage of resources yes, please remember this a small investment will lead to the wastage of resources so according to rodan we should invest in a large amount in order to push and push under developed countries to the developed so let us move this is about uh, big push theory of rosenstein rodan so let us move to the next question according to harshman convergence series comprises investment project that appropriate more external economies than they create and divergent series comprises investment projects that create less external economies than what they appropriate in terms of these investments in power and transport has option a convergent series option b divergent series option c respectively convergent and divergent series option d uh, both a and b yes here the right answer is uh, these uh, power sector and transportation sector are, are coming under the divergent series yes investment on transportation power health are known as the divergent series please remember it so let us see the difference between convergent series and divergent series convergent series means project which with which withdraw more external economies than they can create and divergent means projects which withdraw less external economies than they create and convergent series means this is in this is, uh, here the investment is made by private sector in divergent series inver, investment is undertaken by the government agencies in convergent series uh, it is a con it is influenced by profit motive because private people are investing here in divergent series uh, uh, here the investment is done by the government for the social welfare convergent series made in directly productive activities convergent series means here the investment made in the directly productive activities but in uh, divergent series here investment is made on the social overhead capital not on the productive activities so in uh, for example convergent series uh, in ex uh, example investment in agriculture uh, and industries yes divergent series investment in health sector education sector power and transportation yes they are, these are the examples for divergent series the next question is libenstein in his critical minimum effort theory treats population as a factor that is income generating income depressing uh, investment inducing option d market expanding yes here uh, these two options we can eliminate here Yes, Libenstein is critical minimum effort theory treats population as factor that is income depressing. Yes, here a little bit confusion is there between option A and option B, income generating and option B, income depressing. Yes, uh, you can comment the answer in the comment box. Yes, I think option B, income depressing is the right answer. Yes, uh, so let us see the explanation here. According to Libenstein, a sufficiently large minimum effort is necessary. At the outset of the necessary minimum is to be achieved yes in order to push the development yes the large a large minimum effort is necessary yes again it is necessary for the sustained economic growth of underdeveloped countries that a certain minimum sum of money is invested yes and yes minimum amount we should invest in the economy yes to boost the country to develop to, uh, for to develop to boost the development in the economy certain amount of investment is necessary professor livingston has further added that in order to achieve the transition from the state of backwardness to the more developed state yes in order to move the country from backwardness to the developed where we can expect sec uh, steady secular growth it is also known as the steady secular growth if you want to maintain steady secular growth it is necessary though not always sufficient condition that at the same point or during the same period the economy should receive a stimulus to growth that is necessary than a certain minimum size okay so certain uh, level of investment is necessary 
the next question is match the following list one list two let us move to the answer directly option a is the correct answer solo solo neutral technological change under which the labor output ratio remains constant so that the factor proportions are based in favor of saving capital yes please remember this keyword when solo comes capital saving second one hicks neutral technological change under which despite the change in output the capital labor ratio remains constant harold neutral technological change under which the capital output ratio remains constant so that the factor proportions are based based in favor of saving labor yes please remember these two keywords when solo comes it is uh, saving capital when harold comes it is saving labor the next question is according to milder the main uh, cause of regional inequalities in the underdeveloped countries has been option a weak backwash effect and strong spread effect option b weak backwash and spread effect option c strong backwash and spread effect option d strong backwash and weak spread effect as yes, according to milder the main cause of regional inequalities in underdeveloped countries is due to strong backwash effect and weak spread effect so option d is the right answer as yes, according to milder international and inter regional economic relations in practice involve unequal exchanges in the sense that the weak is always exploited by the strong please remember the weaker section weaker section of the economy is always exploited by the stronger section of the economy the main reason is strong backwash effect and weak spread effect the next question is the concept of forward linkage and backward linkage were used mainly in the developmental theory this is propounded by mirdal harshman bok levinston yes uh, forward linkage and backward linkage are given by harshman so option b is the correct answer yes what do you mean by forward and backward linkage harshman introduced the concept of backward linkage and forward linkage according to him forward linkage is created when investment in a particular project encourages investment in the subsequent stages of production yes investment in one sector yes it will benefit to the other sector also and a backward linkage is created when a project encourages investment in facilities that enable the project to succeed yes this is the difference between forward linkage and backward linkage the next question is a big push strategy of development is based on option a backwash effect option b productivity option c internal economies option d external economies yes, as you all know it is very easy question big push there is based on external economies so option d is the right answer as yes, the basic rationale of the big push theory is balanced growth theory is based upon the idea of external economies just yes, please remember that uh, big push theory is based on external economies in the theory of welfare economics external economies are defined as those unpaid benefits which go to the third party as yes, please remember this definition also external economies means these are the benefits going to the other countries and they are not paying for these benefits the private cost and prices of products fail to reflect these and then market prices have to be corrected if an account of these external economies is to be taken the next next question is related to assertion and reasoning assertion is the neo classical growth theory believes that there is substantial difference in the growth pattern of less developed countries and the developed countries reason is this is mostly due to the market failure in the less developed countries caused by a variety of imperfections existing in such economies yes four options are given here the right answer is option a both assertion and reason are true and reason is correct explanation of the assertion the next question is development process has been viewed as chain of disequilibria this statement is given by rosenstern rodan baldwin levenstern harshman yes this is also given by ao harshman please remember it 
एस अकॉर्डिंग टू हर्षमन डेवलपमेंट इज अ चैन ऑफ डिस इक्विलिब्रियम दैट मस्ट बी केप्ट अलाइव रेदर दैन एलिमिनेट द डिस इक्विलिब्रियम ऑफ विच प्रॉफिट एंड लॉसेस आर सिम्टम्स इन अ कॉम्पिटेटिव इकोनॉमी दिस इज गिवन बाय फेमस इकोनॉमिस्ट हर्षमन ओके फ्रेंड दिस इज अबाउट अवर टूडे सेशन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू जॉइन अवर पेपर वन क्रैश कोर्स यू विल गेट सिक्सटी मॉक टेस्ट विथ पी डी एफ सोल्यूशन नोट्स यू आर गोइंग टू गेट वीडियो लेक्चर्स यू विल गेट आई ओनली एट रुपीज नाइन नाइन्टी नाइन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू जॉइन यू कैन कॉन्टैक्ट दिस नंबर एंड फॉर पेपर टू इकोनॉमिक्स आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी ट्वेंटी मॉक टेस्ट पी डी एफ सोल्यूशन नोट्स टू थाउजेंड प्लस एम सी क्यू पी डी एफ ओनली एट रुपीज नाइन नाइन्टी नाइन फॉर पेपर टू कॉमर्स ऑल्सो यू विल गेट 20 mock test pdf solution notes and video lectures only at rupees 999 if you want to join you can contact this number as i wish all the best to all candidates who are appearing for ugc net 2021 thank you